How do you kill a man's values? Do you kill his capacity for greatness? Or do you kill his means to achieve it? What if you just kill him before he has any sense of value at all? Hi, I'm Jack Ryder, and I chronicle the strange, the weird, and the creepy. Tonight, I would like to tell you the story about how one man escaped his fate to seize his destiny. I call it Starman. He remembers it like yesterday. Prince Gavin was among the Imperial heirs of Throne World. To be born an heir was a great honor and an even greater curse. Yet Gavin worries not. Emperor Rilsum is young and healthy. Imperial politics are stable. Gavin can live out his life without a care in the cosmos. The polo tournament is suddenly cut short by the arrival of a royal flagship. An admiral disembarks and cancels all sporting events on Throne World. Gavin demands to know why the admiral is usurping Imperial prerogative. The admiral notifies him that Emperor Rilsum has passed. Gavin knows what this means. Either he will ascend the throne or die. And so Gavin is escorted away as is his love, Maria. Soon, high in the orbital palace, Gavin is escorted to a waiting room to find his sister, Clarissa. With tears on her face, she recounts being at the Emperor's side when he passed. Strangely, we have yet to hear the circumstances to the Emperor's death, as if someone were playing a game of thrones. Like Gavin, Princess Clarissa knows the law. One member in the Imperial line will be elected to the throne. All others will be executed so that civil wars never happen. If elected, Gavin vows to change the millennia-old law in order to spare Clarissa. She thinks him foolish for thinking he could so easily change the status quo. Maria then arrives, embracing Gavin for what might be the last time. Suddenly, the Chamberlain bursts into the room. He bellows that the council has elected wisely. All hail the new majesty, Empress Clarissa. Crying tears of relief, Clarissa explains that she will live. The prince beseeches his sister to show him the same mercy as he would. Clarissa reminds him that the millennia-old traditions are never challenged. Gavin is dragged away for execution. Clarissa then offers Maria a consolation prize. She will adopt Maria into her new imperial house. Elsewhere, Gavin declines his last meal. The guard whispers he's of a faction that would free him. Angered, Gavin points out the imperial mark burned into his forehead. His own face condemns him to death. The guard clarifies that the mark only increases Gavin's value as a pawn. Gavin kills the unpatriotic guard. Although condemned, he will not overthrow his sister. A loyal guard then appears relieved that the prince will not resist his fate. Gavin willingly steps into the airlock, and ejected he is into the vacuum. They say that in space, no one can hear you scream. Perhaps, delirious, he drifts into a creature also surviving without a spacesuit. The stranger reads Gavin's thoughts. He assures the discarded prince he is no hallucination. What the stranger finds truly surprising is not he himself surviving without a spacesuit, but Gavin. Our hero awakens in a most psychedelic cave. The stranger replies the location is more a retreat than a cave. He is no hallucination. Rather, he is a searcher of certain truths. Those truths, however, he may never find thanks to Gavin. The stranger's millennia-long meditation was disturbed due to Gavin's screaming thoughts. Gavin retorts that of course his thoughts were screaming. He was dying. The stranger reveals Gavin is a mutant among his species, one able to survive in the vacuum of space. He grants the prince a pair of starbands to focus his powers. Grateful, Gavin asks how he may repay the stranger's kindness. The stranger imparts that Gavin is now his responsibility, all because he opened his heart to a creature in need. As for his name, the stranger reveals, he has long since renounced it. 
but if Gavin so requires one, he then may be called Mentor. Together, they discover the prince's mutant body can collect and convert stellar radiation into sustenance and propulsion. They even discover a weakness. Apparently, Gavin becomes weaker the more insulated he is from stellar radiation. Once, he lived a charmed life with a price. Now, he will live free with an actual purpose. Perhaps the stars were always meant to be his destination. And so, he shall now henceforth be known as Starman. You have survived the madness of Steve Ditko, but will you survive sanity?